Okay, so I'm going to try this again. I just tried to record a video of this um, analysis and commentary, and the phone rang right at the end, and I was distracted by trying to uh, end the video before the answering machine kicked in, and I didn't save it correctly. So, yay, it's gone. So <laughs> I'm going to restart my commentary by uh, discussing the opening. We went into a French defense, which I was hoping for. I'd done a little bit of preparation, but not very much uh, on what he likes to play. And I was pretty confident I could get into a French defense based on uh, his play in earlier games. Uh, he tried something new here. This A4 move is not something I was expecting. And I did not see any way that it was sound. I went about my business of, of trading on uh, D4. And he declined to trade right away. He went ahead and pushed to a5. Now his theory here, I suppose, is to get a little bit of activity by uh, getting his queen in with tempo. I have to retreat to c6, which is pretty obvious, I think. He's going to pile up on c6, pin piece, and I'm going to defend it. And there just isn't a whole lot here because I have plenty of ammo to defend and he has not enough bullets to attack. So he piles up uh, on the queen here, puts a little discovery there, so I have to kind of move away. But here's the goal. My goal is to trade off all these pieces and be up a pawn, because he's given up the a pawn. He has the following pluses. He has pressure on c6. He has an open a half-open a file uh, to put pressure on a7 with. I have the, the possibility of playing a6 here to uh, put a little pressure back on this, this bishop, but the problem is that my rook is pinned. If I, uh, were, if he were to leave it there, I couldn't even take it because he would be able to take the rook with check, and I'm going to have some real problems down there. So um, need to be careful of that. Eventually, I'm going to be able to do that, especially if I can castle. So my my first goal is to defend d7, so that when I do castle and remove a defender, uh, there's adequate protection for this bishop, and I'm going to need to capture up here on d4 to relieve this 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 mess of uh, tactics that's going on here around c6. So uh, I do have enough defense there. Once he's he's kind of chased my, with that bishop move, he kind of chased my queen back to c7, which puts a little bit more uh, defense on, on d7. So uh, it kind of freed me up to do some of the trading I wanted to do. Uh, did it, I did enjoy getting... Uh, the bishop, or I'm sorry, the knight over to c6, so they didn't have to recapture with my uh, king and lose the ability to castle because of this pin. And ordinarily, I'm not going to mind that too much if I'm getting the queens off the board. Um, I'm not sure if, if I'm being clear here, but let me see what I mean. Right here, uh, there's a possibility that he's going to take, actually, right here, there's a possibility that he's going to take here with check, and um, I would have to recapture. So here, 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 here. Now, I don't like this. Uh, my, my rook is pinned down to the defense of a7. His, his rook is attacking on that half-open file. If I can connect the rooks, it's no big deal, because I can do this. But still, I, I still, there's still some pressure here that I don't like. It's nothing major. It's nothing I'm really terribly worried about. But I was happy to be able to get my, uh, my knight over to c6 so that we could trade it that way. And now he has to respond to this. So. Uh, I am still a little worried about a7 here because now we're being attacked by this bishop and the rook both. In fact, I actually hang it right here. He could take it with the rook. Probably not as good to take it with the bishop, uh, but I hung it. He didn't take it. I'm not real sure why, but now I need to protect it. So uh, we still have some of those issues. The pawn is still pinned. It can't come over to the b file to capture anything, but the issue really is to defend the pawn. Uh, and moving it up allows the b7 pawn to defend it. So I'm free to castle now. Um, he is now trying to activate his bad bishop a little bit. And I don't blame him. It's a good plan, but this doesn't really work because it's not fortified here. There's nothing to root it into this hole. Uh, I can chase it away pretty easily, and in fact I do. One thing I need to do is to chase away that queen. So my plan, and I, and I saw this fairly quickly, is that I can move to the b5 square with my light square bishop with tempo and maybe move to the c4 square with tempo as well depending on this knight. Uh, but 
getting this pawn, uh, I'm sorry, getting this bishop outside of my pawn chain here onto this diagonal will be really good for me. I'll be able to have active pieces. My activating my bad bishop is a uh, short-term goal for me. So the way the game played out the next couple of moves, I had to get away from the bishop with my queen. He moves this knight here. Not really sure why. It actually would have would have been a little bit of problem for me getting my uh, light square bishop out in outside of my pawn chain if he would have left it back where it was. I'm not sure what it's really doing there other than I think he's just trying to get it to d4. So I activate my bishop. These two moves do a good job of that. And now he's got trouble. He's not going to be able to defend his bishop anymore. So it's going to have to retreat. After I activate my queen, now I've got this diagonal pretty well. I'm going to have a short-term little anchor for my bishop in enemy territory and get it onto this well-defended diagonal. I've got several places where I could uh, anchor that bishop outside of the pawn chain. So I've activated my bishop, which is a short-term goal for me. The queen also puts pressure on b2. And he's, he's made a little bit, I think this is probably a, a little bit of a mistake. Uh, this, he's trying to hold on to that bishop. That's, he's trying to get it maybe to, to c7 and then to d6, which seems silly to me because I could snap it off any time and probably win that pawn pretty easily with one of my rooks. So not the best of plans, I don't think. But I want to be careful uh, not to allow it, so I'm getting a little bit of uh, protection on that file. He retreats the bishop because he knows he's going to be in trouble in just a minute whenever I come up to c6 with the rook. So, being a little bit preventative. Uh, here what I'm doing is taking away the uh, advanced any advanced moves for this knight. I want to keep the knight at bay as much as possible. I really want my minor pieces to be better than his minor pieces. And so far I think I've accomplished that. This knight's not going anywhere. This bishop is pretty much just a big pawn in this chain. So, my, my bishop's going to be outside of the pawn chain very soon and have a really good diagonal here and be advanced. And then this bishop is my good bishop by definition, but it's actually doing way less than my bad bishop. So it could come alive at really any moment, especially if I keep putting uh, pressure on these files. So he moves his king into the corner, which I'm not really sure why, other than he might have been worried about it being on the same dark square diagonal here, and I might look like I'm trying to move that bishop to here, but right now I'm not. I have other plans. So I want to keep my light square bishop, so I'm going to move it to its advanced post um, at e4. So one of my short-term goals has been, or maybe long-term, I don't know, one of my goals has been accomplished here. Um, now he, oh, he actually hung b2 a couple of moves back, but I didn't take it. And for a couple of reasons I didn't take it. One, I thought my light square bishop was probably more important than the... Uh, b2 pawn. I want to make sure it gets here, but I don't think it works out real well anyway. Say I take here, then he's got a couple of, of rook moves here that can really cause problems for my queen. Now, I've got a lot of safety points along here, but my queen's going to be out of play now. And further, he can also come into my position on the 7th rank, and he's attacking this bishop, which doesn't have a whole lot of places to go now. I mean, this is just ugly right here. So, I didn't like this line at all, and I didn't think it was worth a pawn. So, I go ahead and, and push it into his position, and it's pretty well rooted there. I can come along this diagonal to several different points and keep it outside the pawn chain and active, doing something. So he makes sort of a little weak move to protect his b2 pawn. This is uh, the kind of move that really makes me think I'm winning if he's moving his rook to a2 to protect that pawn. That's not good at all in terms of, of what it means to the game, I think. It's, it's kind of like kneeling a little bit. So uh, I want to keep my bishop moving it away. And now we're going to come over here and maybe try to remove the defender of the b2 pawn. We do want targets. So I'm trying to make targets, create targets. He's trying to defend. He's got his other rook now protecting it. And now I've got plenty of room to get my queen into the game. He's pretty paralyzed here. He doesn't have a whole lot of moves. Um, he knows I'm not attacking the b2 pawn right now. He needs to protect the back rank. Very smart. He's got a pinned knight now. This is very precarious now. Uh, obviously, I can't. I can take the rook for uh, for my and an, and a piece for my queen. Uh, but man, any other pressure going on here, and this is going to be real. This is very precarious. This this knight is pinned and protecting the rook. Uh, the bishop's active on that diagonal. This is just very scary. So I mean, there's discoveries here. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So he's putting himself into a little bit of a mess. So my idea was just to uh, get my last two pieces into the game. 
uh, open up one of these files for my rook, possibly my bishop coming along the diagonal, all kinds of things that can happen here. He's protecting his back rank and his rook a little bit here, and the pin tonight, getting out of the pin of the knight. The B pawn is going up the board, and I think this is a tremendous blunder. He should have let me capture on C3 rather than doing the capturing on B4, because this gets both of my pieces into the game with basically one move. So now the pin is reactivated here. Uh, this piece is attacked twice, defended only once, basically, because this is pinned. I've got back rank threats. It's a mess. Uh, this is a blunder that loses the rook because the knight's pinned. If we just remove the knight altogether, uh, the rook is gone. So, at this point, white resigned, and I won the game. Please leave comments on YouTube. I kind of rushed through this to be basically beat the 15-minute time limit, which I think I did easily. I don't, I don't know how long this has been going, but it doesn't feel like 15 minutes. Um, but also because I just did this once and didn't save it properly, so crossing my fingers I save it properly this time. But please leave comments, and anytime you see a move that you think was better than what I did, or you have a question about why a move was made, any level of question is fine. Any level of criticism is fine. Be gentle. I know I'm not the greatest player, but I think I played decently in this game. So uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.